Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Nirmal Bangan, you know, that yeah, we have with us Anish Bhaltavar, a research analyst, institute director, please uh, also joining me for the show. Anish, good morning and welcome to the show. We've already spoken about what the expectation was with regards to where green auto sales numbers were concerned and the anticipation as you had as well was that yes, there could be an upward on the back of the pent up demand as well as on the back of strong rural sentiments. Uh, have the numbers on an overall basis for the industry met your expectations? So uh, on a qualitative basis, the numbers are on track uh, in terms of the pecking order we had. So if you remember our last conversation, uh, I did mention that tractors would be the, the top most segment uh, performing in the month, followed by motorcycles and, and followed by small cars. So that's what has happened. Um, as per our sense, tractors and motorcycles actually did better than what we were expecting. The tractors I was expecting are anything between zero to say minus 5% kind of a decline. But the numbers were actually surprisingly good. Uh, so for example, m and domestic tractors were up 12%. Uh, if you look at the escorts, they were even better, I think 23, 24%. And uh, Sonalika, uh, which is uh, possibly the third largest uh, brand in India, reported a 55% kind of a growth. So these, these numbers are very encouraging. Uh, followed by motorcycle segment, again, uh, we were expecting about a 35% kind of a decline, but uh, on an average, it was between 25 to 30% decline, So, which is also encouraging. And, and I think rural is coming back in a big way and and supporting the automobile industry as a whole uh, maruti suzuki like i said i mean uh, because they have a decent uh, small car portfolio uh, it uh, it did uh, reasonable uh, and, and broadly in line with what we were expecting so uh, our expectation was about 55 to 60 percent kind of degrowth the reported number was 54 percent degrowth uh, similarly the other uh, pv uh, so so the next biggest is uh, uh, Hyundai, I think reported 49% degrowth and followed by m and again, I think 55% degrowth in its UV segment. So all in all, uh, the numbers were uh, pretty much, uh, or, or the the, uh, the sense that we got from June numbers were pretty much in line with what we were expecting. Right. So, you know, taking these uh, numbers into consideration, one thing that we see day to the year is, the total India, as you also mentioned, is coming back in a big way. Now, there are a lot of factors that are at play right now. One is with regards to where the uh, arrival of Southwest monsoon is concerned. A record crop, you know, in terms of where Ravi sowing goes. And with that, if you go to see a lot of support that has come in from the government already. And right now as well, the support does continue in terms of where the agri space is concerned. Now, if this is going to be the trend going forward, uh, do you think if someone has to look at auto space as an investment, it's going to be mainly companies who are agri-focused, who are rural-focused, and not the ones who are mainly into luxury work? So, I think this rural uh, theme or rural story is uh, going to stay for a long time. Uh, unless we have any extenuating circumstances. Uh, this story should go longer because, uh, I mean, last crop was bumper. You already know that. Even procurement was good, so there's good cash in hand. The sowing of current crop is, uh, it looks, I mean, it looks uh, significantly higher than last year, mainly because the, the monsoons have come or covered the country, I think, 12, 10 to 12 days earlier than last year. So we'll obviously see a, a higher rate of sowing happening vis-a-vis -vis last year this time. So that is, but but it, it gives good cues for a, a good crop. And secondly, the water reservoir levels are still good. And with, with a decent monsoon, it'll still be at a good level for the next crop to also be good. So back-to-back, -back we can see, I mean, there's a good uh, chance that we can see three back-to-back -back bumper crops. I mean, keeping the procurement and, and MSP conversions and everything aside, I think this factor uh, alone can drive the rural segment demand. And hence, uh, the segments that we've been highlighting, tractors and, and motorcycles, should do well for a longer time. Now, uh, slow and steadily, I think uh, unlocking will happen in urban regions as well. So, uh, 
I mean, without a second wave, I think urban regions should also show some kind of an uptake and pent up demand coming towards the later half of the year. So I think uh, the, over there we can see some urban demand uh, coming back, but I think the rural will still re remain stronger for for a longer time. So hence, I think uh, whoever thinks or I mean, rural stocks have already run up. But uh, I think there is still a lot of steam left, given that it's going to be a longer term uh, scenario. Right. And now, if you have to divide it in terms of different segments, I know broad based, we already spoke about it. If you have to look at the passenger vehicle segment, uh, Maruti, Hyundai, MM, again, and Tata Motors, these are the major types we are looking at. Hyundai is not even listed. Uh, where would you advise someone to place their bets on? Who is better placed, basically? So, uh, I mean, the only pure play passenger vehicle company is Maruti Suzuki. Mm -hmm. Now, so, I mean, if you just want to play passenger cars, uh, Maruti is the best bet. I mean, the, because it's the only one. Uh, second is m and &M, I mean, 60% of its returns are dependent on tractors. Tractors are looking good. So again, again, M&M uh, uh, becomes uh, uh, a hot stock uh, at this point because of both its UV segment is also a lot more dependent on the rural segment. So I think both the segments will get a lot of benefits coming out from rural revival. Uh, the next stock, Tata Motors, I mean, uh, we, we don't have an active coverage, but uh, Tata Motors, passenger vehicles, I mean, there's, there's, there's literally no contribution to its profits. Mm. And uh, seeing the business, I mean, it's more of a JLR play. So again, I mean, it's a call on JLR that someone has to take. So I mean, these are the the listed passenger vehicle companies that you know uh, that that comes in mind when we talk about the segment. Right. And for Tata Motors, again, if you have to look at the CV side of business as well, that is absolutely weak. Now, you know, taking you know, I mean, across parameters, across segments, you're seeing no positive truth that are emerging for a Tata Motors. Uh, now, with this, again, another big play that was that you know, uh, taking into consideration uh, with regards to two wheelers and three wheelers, and issue is Bajaj Auto. Now, what's happened is because shared mobility is something that people are going to avoid. Do you think that's something which could really hurt Bajaj Auto? Um, or even for that matter, Atul Auto or you know TVS. See, three wheelers uh, as a proportion of sales for uh, TVS and Bajaj is lower uh, compared to say Atul Auto. Atul yeah. Auto is pure based three wheeler. Pure, yeah. uh, Bajaj Auto, you can say about say twenty five percent of its portfolio is uh, sales is three wheelers. So uh, looking at that number, yeah, I mean, there will be some pressure on that segment, but I think it's uh, what, what's working for Bajaj Auto is its exports are doing well. Even if you look at uh, export three-wheeler numbers, they were pretty encouraging. And uh, again, the motorcycle segment has come, even domestic motorcycle segment, uh, I mean, a 20%, 26% decline is, is a very good number. Uh, so I think for, for Bajaj, the diversified portfolio will work for them. So even if one segment doesn't work, the other, other segments will take the money. Uh, for TVS, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm not very positive on TVS, uh, mainly because, I mean, it doesn't fit into the rural play. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, it's, it's portfolio. I mean, uh, although it's very diverse, but there's a lot of pressure coming to on its scooter and moped segment. So, Scooter segment, uh, the pressure is because urban uh, economy or urban uh, demand is not coming. And secondly, mopeds, I think I've seen a lot of price increase uh, uh, with, with the last few regulations that have come in. So because of that, I mean, the, the cost of acquisition is, is, is gone higher. And hence, I think that there's a demand uh, slack that we are seeing in that segment. So that's why TVS, I think I'm not very positive on. Right. And uh, overall as well from here on, are you expecting that what's happening is slowly, steadily to see the monthly base numbers are increasing yet again. Now, do you think this kind of growth will continue or we will see growth tapering off because of the base increasing from here on? See, the base of uh, last year was gradually coming down towards the end of the year anyways. So if you look at year on year basis, that the base is, is, is anyways low. If you look at sequentially again, I mean, the base is 
quite low so you can't actually compare may to june or june to may for for that matter and again i mean uh, uh, with with pent up demand and all the logistics issues uh, getting sorted slowly and steadily again on a on a month on month or sequential basis july will look even even better than june so i think this this uh, uptrend probably will go on for some time till we see the the normalized levels of uh, or the pent up demand gets normalized but then you will see other regions reviving as well like urban and all so i think that there there could be good traction coming in in uh, basically the the segments we were talking about uh, for the rest of the year as well right and how long do you think we could get back to normalcy in terms of pre covid levels pre covid levels i mean uh, at least for the rural based segments uh, i mean tractors is already already normal motorcycles can come back to normal say around uh, there's a good chance around uh, uh, festival periods uh so that's and and even small car segments uh, okay, should come back around the the motorcycle segment the other segment that will see longest time for uh, coming back to normal and i i think pre covid levels are not even normal for say commercial vehicles so, i mean pre covid as well the the whole segment was down 35% okay. so i think to come back to normal it will take a, a a few more uh, uh, drivers i think the biggest driver that we need for commercial vehicles is scrappage policy which i don't see it coming this year for sure mm. i think that segment will struggle for some time right and overall if you look at the wholesale numbers as well as the retail numbers what are channel checks indicating is it are we trying uh, do you think that the retail sales are better than what the wholesale numbers are indicating uh, because overall right now automakers are still looking to ramp up production on the back of supply chain constraints uh so when i talk to channels um i mean it's kind of mixed because uh, uh, the uh, unlocking or or you know the the severity of virus is also very very mixed so i mean in in rural regions there's definitely positive demand so uh, the retails are looking better than than wholesales mm-hmm. but then on the urban side again i mean it's the other way so uh, all in all i think uh, retails probably are or wholesales are probably catching up with retails is what we can say uh, if, even if you look at uh, wahan data uh, i mean it's not much behind uh, the wholesale numbers that we've seen uh, so i think it's it's going hand in hand a lot of the companies and would be uh, i mean although they would want to fill the channels but a lot of the dealers are probably uh, 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 resisting that so I, i i don't think a lot of channel filling would be happening yet uh, but we'll we'll have to see how the demand pans out and and again towards the festival season we can see channel filling happening and hence the, i mean post monsoon season should the numbers should look better even better i'm hoping for the best and the numbers improve from here on but thank you anish so much for joining us on the show and giving us uh, those insights we will come back to you once you know the trends start improving and let's see what july has in store as well thank you so much for joining us thanks for having me